A lot of people ask me what's special about the work that we do at Clifford Chance. And I always say that at Clifford Chance, you have the opportunity to work on the most exciting global deals from across the world. It sounds great, right? But what does that actually mean? What roles do different people play? What does it mean to work as part of a global team? What actually happens on a deal? Let's start from the beginning of a deal. This is Bryony, a partner in the energy and infrastructure practice in London. So let's say I'm helping advise a client in the UK who's looking to buy a global energy company headquartered in Asia, but with renewable assets all over the world. How do we approach a deal like this? Well, first of all, we need to plan and structure the deal. We ask ourselves questions like, how is the transaction going to be financed? What sort of entity does the acquisition vehicle need to be? And what jurisdictions do we need a presence in to support this deal? So we're always coming back to the central question of what is our client trying to achieve here? Once we've done that, we're ready to assemble our global team. And this is where Annabelle comes in. As a senior resource manager, my job is all about helping partners and other senior lawyers allocate people on these deals. At the head of the deal, we have a lead partner, like Bryony. She oversees the whole deal. But on a multi-jurisdictional deal like this, we'll have partners from all over the world helping us. As well as partners, you'll also have counsels, like Diana, from the Frankfurt office. My role as a counsel on a transaction deal is to be the link between junior and senior lawyers working on the deal and, of course, to be part of the negotiations of the transaction. Senior associates like Olivia from London. As a senior associate, I'm really coordinating the team, drafting the transaction documents and supporting other aspects of the transaction. And a team of associates like Dennis from New York. My role as a regulatory associate is to make sure that all the transaction parties are complying with the different securities regimes. And of course, our trainees. On large deals like this, we also get legal project managers involved, like Tracy from our Hong Kong office. As a legal project manager on our deals, I ensure that I coordinate with the various teams involved, make sure all the work streams are run as smoothly as possible, and that we hit all the deadlines. Now the team's set, we need to conduct the due diligence. Since the target company is based in Asia, I will lead the due diligence work stream from the Hong Kong office. But what is due diligence anyway? Conducting due diligence is a bit like checking a restaurant to see if it's suitable for a dinner with your friends. You first check if the restaurant is like the one advertised online. Next, you might look through the menu, making sure you knock down what allergens are in the food. You may even take a quick look at the kitchen and order some food for yourself. This process is all about looking into the details, flagging issues in advance, and also finding solutions for issues. In a similar way, during due diligence, we look at all the documents related to the target company and flag any potential issues or risks we need to mitigate. For example, does the company have existing litigation pending? This will be crucial for the subsequent work and contracts we draft up and in the negotiations. I'll summarize my findings and discuss them with Vicky, who is a partner from the Hong Kong office, also working on a deal with the London team. Another critical part of our work is around how the deal is being financed. Financing can take many different structures. For example, is it pure debt, is it equity, or maybe it's a mixture of both. However a deal is being financed, there are always legal and regulatory requirements that we will need to address. Things are even more complex because the deal is a multi-jurisdictional transaction involving assets and parties being located in different parts of the world, including the US. That's why we need help from our colleagues, such as Dennis in New York. It's important that all financial rules and regulations are abided by in the regions involved in the deal. The challenge is that these rules and regulations can be very different across different regions involved. And that's where I come in, and I take a detailed look at things like the assets of the acquiring company, the financial statements of the subsidiaries, and the registration status of all the parties involved. It's a great example of bringing together different experts and different regions to achieve a common goal. 
Okay, so the due diligence is done and the finance work streams are underway. But there's so much more that we still have to do. There are so many questions that we should be asking on a deal like this. For example, how are employees going to be treated after the deal is done? What kind of licensing agreements does the target company currently have? And what needs to be done once they get bought? Are there specific tax issues? Are there any antitrust issues? Ultimately, all of this work then has to be reflected in the contracts. They're the nuts and bolts of the transaction. There are many contracts and documents that need to be drafted across the lifespan of a deal. Documents like the term sheet is the main document in connection with the deal, and the sale and purchase agreement is the final contract that's signed once all of the terms have been agreed. The drafting will then be reviewed by partners as well as councils like Diana from our Frankfurt office. There's so much work involved to really negotiate and draft a contract, but these initial drafts are just the beginning. The contracts go to lots and lots of redrafting, forming the basis for the negotiation negotiations with the other party. Conducting negotiations is a bit like playing squash. You need to be quick on your feet, anticipating your opponent's moves and responding with precision. Each shot requires strategy and control, much like a negotiation, where you might receive terms, but then have to amend your views based on the other party's responses. But unlike squash, it's not a combative exercise. It isn't about winning every point. It's about finding mutually beneficial outcomes for all parties. Drafting, redrafting, negotiations, redrafting again. It can be challenging with a lot of late nights. How are you going to reflect those in the document? Who do you need to input to get that finalised? Attention to detail is really important here. You're constantly updating that draft to reflect what the latest discussions are between the parties. And that does take a very long time, but it's the moment where all the hard work, all the late nights, the drafting, the due diligence, the research all comes together. So after months of hard work, the day comes when the negotiations are finally finished and the terms are agreed. Being in that room with all of the people that you've been getting through that with, shaking hands and feeling relieved to have got to that point, it's a really incredible feeling. I mean, I've been doing this about 15 years, but um, still every time we complete a signing, I find it very, very exciting. When you get that call saying that the deal's closed and we're pencils down, there's nothing quite like it. A deal is like a beautiful piece of orchestral music. It's dynamic and exciting and the tempo is always changing. Most importantly, you're coming together with a unique set of colleagues who are bright and talented from all over the world to achieve one singular goal. Clifford Chance has a great culture of collaboration and teamwork. You're spending time with some of the smartest people you're probably ever going to meet, and you're learning stuff every time you talk to them. There's this relationship that has developed over the life cycle of the deal. There's never a dull moment. You're having to think on your feet, you're having to troubleshoot. It's very, very fast moving. I'm constantly being challenged. Sometimes it is long hours and it is long nights. But at the end of the day, seeing all the pieces come together, that makes it all worth it. Every deal you really come out as a more resilient lawyer, as a more resilient person. Seeing your deals getting publicized on the newspaper. The sense of joy. The best feeling ever. To be able to say we did it. To see the deals from beginning to end. To see us as a one firm coming together. It is such an amazing feeling.